Muy buenas tardes, aquí estamos nuevamente eh, con ustedes a través de Oslo Rock. Eh, vamos a comenzar esta temporada muy contentas de tenerlos a todos aquí y de estar de vuelta con este programa tan, eh, tan querido que tanto queremos aquí en In The Mix Style eh, y también hemos echado mucho de menos. Y vamos a comenzar esta temporada entrevistando a un gran personaje y un gran artista que se llama Mark Steiner. Eh, así que vamos a hablar un poquito con él, pero esta vez en inglés, no en español, porque así es en Oslo Rock. Entrevistamos alguna vez en español, alguna vez en inglés y así nos vamos. Así que vamos a darle la bienvenida a Mark Steiner. Mark Steiner, welcome to Oslo Rock. Muchas gracias. How are you? Um, <laughs> that's, that's about the extent <laughs> of my Spanish. Um, uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's a pleasure for us too, Mark. Uh, very nice of you taking us with you. Um, uh, Mark, tell us a bit about uh, yourself. Uh, What about uh, your name, Mark Steiner, and his problems? Uh, okay. Tell us about. I'll try and keep this, not I'll tell try us about really your problems, short. but uh, his problems. Yeah. Well. <laughs> his, <laughs> right. Me and my problems. Um, well, I'm originally from New York City. I've been living in Norway for 20 years now. Um, so, that's actually uh, almost half of my life that I've been living here now. Um, I have a Norwegian mother, a Norwegian ex-wife and um, always had a connection to Norway. So when 9-11 happened in uh, to, uh, 2001, um, I had just gotten married and a few days before uh, with a rock and roll wedding down at CBGB's down in the East Village. And then the, everything got turned upside down. So we moved to Norway. Um, the marriage didn't last, although my ex-wife and I are still friends. Uh, but, um, so I've been living in Norway since then and focusing on a solo career. Um, and getting a band together was really difficult. Um, it's always changed. And so actually a friend of mine, as kind of a joke, he said, um, yeah, you should call yourself Mark Steiner and his problems. <laughs> and I thought, hey, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> so... Uh, because, and, and I'll just add in, because my music is pretty, um, it's on the dark side, definitely melancholic, and um, somewhere between, some people call, the, like, earlier stuff, maybe lounge noir, and then more recently, maybe it's more swamp rock, um, very in the Australian, Melbourne kind of genre. And, um, yeah, it's, um, uh, it, but there's also a sense of humor to it. And I thought, you know, if I'm just Mark Steiner, it's kind of like, and, you know, what is that? Are you a singer-songwriter? Like, you know, no, it's a bit more complicated. So, there we go. I bet a lot of people have asked you about the same question to, through, through the years, about his problems. Why, why that name? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that's why I couldn't uh, let myself <laughs> not ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you have a uh, you had a single release, and now the 11th of March that you you had. Uh, how how tell tell us about that single? Um, that's actually my first real attempt as as, as a solo artist. It's a, my first real attempt at doing a, a song in Norwegian, because um, I've always sung in English, written my lyrics in English, um, and actually right now March of 2022 it, it is exactly 20 years ago since i moved here okay and i thought well i can speak the language i can't stop in Osh so i should actually maybe go through the motions of trying to put out a song in norwegian and that's kind of kind of how that came about but uh, do you always have a talk norwegian yeah i mean growing up with a norwegian mother and family over Norway, I was very, very, very fortunate to go back and forth across the Atlantic um, once a year, most, mostly, during the summer, to, to visit grandparents. And, um, so yeah, so, so I grew so up bilingual. So you've always spoken you know. Norwegian? I'm sorry? You've always uh, spoken Norwegian. Yeah, but I think my Norwegian has hopefully has improved these past 20 years since I now live in Oslo, 
Yeah. No, because I, I ask you because uh, when I heard the song, uh, it was like you always talk Norwegian. That's why I, said, I think I think it's strange that that you that you told me that uh, you have lived in uh, New York and you only only twenty years here. I I I thought you always lived here. Well. Muchas gracias. I take that as a serious compliment. Thank you. Um, uh, it's funny because it depends on who I'm speaking with. Mo well, often people don't hear that I'm, when I speak Norwegian, they don't, often don't hear that I'm not Norwegian. But every now and then there's that one person right away, just they hear that, that one particular little bit, you know. And I mean, for me, it's it's kind of either or. I don't know. I think in Norwegian. I think in English, depending on what I'm thinking about. So. No, I got the same uh, same drama. <laughs> don't worry. Uh, a lot of uh, languages get mixed up in your head, and you think, and then you write, and, and then you a lot of things in a lot of languages. But uh, your new album, Black Hole, uh, is having a release in September, uh, and you have a concert uh, in. in June, 4th of June, yeah. here, here in Oslo. Tell us uh, how it's going to be. Well, the concert in June is actually a really big deal for me personally, because um, I'll, I'll get into the, the, the recording after, the, afterwards, but we're playing support for a band that um, I first saw on in a film when I was 18 years old, and I went to see the Wim Wenders, the German director, did a film called um, Der Himmel über Berlin, or um, also known as Wings of Desire in English. And uh, there's there's a couple of scenes in there. One is the sort of the closing scene is with Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and Nick Cave and I had already I had already um, tuned into into his music. But there were the other bands that played a bit earlier was the one that really grabbed me. It was a band called Crime in the City Solution. And an, an Australian band who started in the late 70s and started playing through the um, throughout the 80s and relocated to Berlin. Um, and they've had a bit of a changing circle of members over the years. Uh, so early on, they had um, um, the, uh, well, the, the, the singer has been the same, Simon Bonney, and then his wife, uh, Bronwyn Adams Bonney. And, um, yeah, I mean, to me, as a, as a, as a teenager, I mean, I just, it just, I saw Roland Howard from the birthday party in that band, smoking a cigarette and playing guitar, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, who is that guy, you know? Uh. And, uh. And it really just changed everything in my, my whole strategy as far as what I just loved in music. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there were people like Mick Harvey was in that band, Alexander Hacke from Einstrosen um, Neubauten, and uh, Dave Eugene Edwards from 16 Horsepower has been in that band. And there, it's one of these bands that really deserves so much more notoriety, but just has always been riding just below the surface. Um, but they're playing in Oslo. It's they haven't played in Norway in thirty-six years or something. It's crazy, and it's the first time they're playing, and we get to play support. So oh, this that's is um, very good. You know, yeah, and that's why I, I was just going to tell you how was this uh, this experience working with uh, Mick Harvey. Well, I've worked actually have worked with Mick Harvey in the past. Um, I played support with him uh, for him. Um, and actually road managed some of the Norwegian shows. And we also did um, uh, three or four shows in Portugal. And I think this was in 2012. Um, so, I mean, just really delightful. Uh, Mick Harvey is an incredible person as a, you know, the backbone of so many different projects. Mm. And, um, and he's just a, he's a real, he's a really lovely guy. Um, and he's, but he's also very strong-willed, knows what he's doing, um, and I think deserves respect. You know, so again, yeah, he's um, a great drummer. He's not in this constellation of Crime the City Solution, but you know, it's all sort of in the same family. 
Yeah, you have worked with uh, several art, uh, several artists uh, uh, during your career. Uh, you also worked with Madrugada. Madrugada, Madrugada. Yeah, well, funny, I say it funny, in Spanish funny. because Madrugada is like a Spanish name, but it's uh, yes, Madrugada. Yes, I, I know. It's, 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 it's well, it's the blue hour, right? It's the more the, the hour before the sun comes up. Yeah, the sky. Madrugada is very blue, important. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's um. Especially, yeah, if you, especially if you are awake. Sorry. Especially if you are awake at that hour. It's very yeah. important. <laughs> well, I, I, that's how they apparently that's how their name came about because that's when they ended up going home. Yeah. You know, after being out of the town. Right. <laughs> You're so right. So, but I, I met those guys in the late nineties um, here in Oslo. I was visiting. I didn't really know anybody in the music scene, and I walked into a little bar, and the bass player Frude uh, Jakobsen, mm -hmm. um, he was working behind the bar, and this is before they put out their first album. Okay. So we connected and we've been friends over the years. And, and um, I bought I brought Madrigada to New York in 2004 okay. uh, pro as a promoter and also a support. And they played four shows in five days. And that was a lot of fun too. That's, I love Madrigada. It's like, I always, uh, I play them like a lot of times. That, my show so <laughs> I, I love that i love the the spirit of these guys too and their music and everything you know how they are and uh, i i bet it was very special to work with them for you yeah absolutely i mean they're very they're very down to earth they're from the north of norway um so there's a little bit of a difference in terms of how they are just as people uh, so southerners here in, in Oslo are a bit, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit, um, I, I, the northern Norwegians tend to be more open um, and, and, and just warm, there's a certain warmth, a certain difference, which I found really refreshing. And, um, and also they, they for, for whatever reason, they, they love dark music up, up there too. Maybe it's because of the long, cold, dark yeah. winters they have. <laughs> maybe. No, but they're great. Uh, but uh, your your song that you released like uh, now is named Syn. It's a yeah. vi vision yes. in English. Um, and it's recorded with uh, Ted Parsons uh, at the drums. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yes, it is. That, that, tell us, that, uh, tell us about uh, this cooperation. Uh, how this cooperation worked out with him? Okay. Well, I can tell you, Ted Parsons. I can just show you. Behind, well, you can't really see it, but that's his drum kit behind. Okay, under the sheet I see it. Uh, I have to. So change <laughs> sight. Not, um, not look at the camera, but uh, yes, I saw it. Yeah. So 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 uh, Ted is. Um, he keeps his drums in my studio here. Okay. And we've been um, we've been working together for a good, uh, oh, I don't know, probably four or five years. Ted Ted Parsons used to be in a band called Prong, but he's also played with Swans and Killing Joke, um, and and just I mean a ton of other people. Uh, he's a very, I mean, he, again, another just really down to earth great guy. Very funny, um, very warm, um, but also he's just done so much over over the years. So he lives in, in an Oslo area, and so he and I started playing together music together. Um, I think through a gig where we were invited, both invited in to play with um, Martin DC, who's a New York producer. Um, and uh, so also Leon Moralia, who is. Um, He's an uh, Italian, uh, British uh, bass player and musician and producer. He lives here in Oslo, so he's in the band. He plays bass with us. And then we have a guitar player named um, who's um, from London um, with a Polish background. His name is Romek Pollock uh, Edwards, um, Rom, as we call him. And uh, I mean, we just met here in Oslo and we started playing music and now we've become a band. So they're the latest incarnation of Mark Stein and his problem. That's like good. The so they're part of your problems. Yeah, and they're not really problems. 
<laughs> so all these guys are going to play with you uh, at the concert the 4th of June this year. Yes. You're here in Oslo. Yes. Where is the concert going uh, going to be? The concert will be at John D. John D. Okay. Which is in, on Saturday the 4th of June. That's great and because the then, we, then, then we, we just announced it and that's good. Well, that's fantastic. People that want to hear <laughs> Jeff Parsons the and they listen to you at vocals and uh, the rest of the band are uh, just welcome to, to, to buy tickets and to, to support the artists here in Norway. It's yes. very important. Mark Steiner, it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, we could talk like hours with you because you have so much to tell us. <laughs> but we we don't have all the time in the world and uh, it's been uh, really nice uh, this interview with you hope we can do it again i would later I would this year when this year you can tell again. us about more plans you have and we'll we, we we are just going to get in touch with you uh, after maybe the concert then we can talk about the the plans for 2022 yes Okay, thank you. And uh, then you can introduce maybe your song, Scene, Vision in English. Yeah, uh, so oh, quickly then, the uh, so Scene, as you said, it means vision. Um, and it's a bit of a different take on how I normally do songs. Um, I'll be the first to admit it's a bit influenced by some of the 90s music that was going on here in Oslo. Um, so kind of a little bit of a nod to that. And um, other than that, um, yeah, it was just great recording with Ted. And uh, I did all, actually did all the other instruments myself, which is a first for me. Um, so that was the, because I'm not a drummer, so I needed a little bit of help there. But it's kind of a pre-release before the album. The song will not be on the album. Um, the, other, the, the rest of the album will have at least eight songs in English. So, and that we hope comes out by September. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, then you can get, introduce your own song here at uh, Oslo Rock, especially for us. And thank you okay. for joining well, us this evening. Well, you're now listening to, Os to Oslo Rock. And this is my song, Scene, by my band Mark Steiner and his problems.
Oh 